every theory we you have in science is an effective theory, an approximate theory that doesn't describe a fundamental layer of reality. So to say there must be a fundamental theory, we've never seen one. We've have no evidence that it exists. So is it could it, just go on forever. We have no a, idea. If this is is this a semantical issue that we're discussing? Because I'm totally open to what that fundamental theory can be. And it right. can be that it oscillates. I don't know what it is. It doesn't have to be a, a very deterministic ultimate theory. So that, that theory can have multiplicities to it. But mm -hmm. that is the theory. Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm speaking with particle physicist Daniel Whiteson about his profound, insightful, and highly engaging new book, Do Aliens Speak Physics? And other questions about science and the nature of reality. Welcome, David. I love the book. Um, you open with four possible outcomes of a first alien contact, um, person to person, uh, only one of which really leads to your book. So what are all four and why do only one lead to the book? <laughs> Well, we don't know if aliens are going to be friendly or not. So they could just eat us. They could zap us from space. They could send us to work in the hydrogen mines. Or my favorite, we have a respectful knowledge exchange and learn the secrets of the universe. <laughs> okay, so let me, uh, let me give uh, a, a more comprehensive bio at this point, and then we'll get into the book. Daniel Whiteson is an experimental particle physicist and professor of physics and astronomy at the University of California, Irvine. He is a member of ATLAS, the largest general purpose particle detector at CERN's Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, involved in the discovery of the Higgs boson. Daniel uses machine learning and statistical tools to analyze high energy particle collisions in seeking the nature of matter and energy. His previous books, very popular, are we have no idea, a guide to the unknown universe, and frequently asked questions about the universe. So, David, let's get into the book. Uh, give me an overall sense of the, the theme and what you, you're developing, and then I'd like to go through an, an overview of some of the chapters. Sure. Thanks for having me on. Uh, the book is about the question of when aliens arrive, which I look forward to, can we talk to them using physics? Can we share our curiosity about the nature of the universe and make mental contact using these ideas that physicists believe are universal. You know, biology obviously is relevant to life on Earth, psychology. So much of the science we do here on Earth is affected by our humanity, is about our humanity. Physics purports to be bigger than humanity, broader than Earth. We, you know, Newton sent our concepts into the heavens, thinking that gravity doesn't just apply to apples, but also to the moon and to distant galaxies. And physicists also like to believe that the denizens of those distant galaxies might discover the same laws of physics as we do, might even represent them in similar or in ways that we can understand, that we could have a galactic science conference with them as we investigate these questions together. And that's a delightful fantasy, but the book is asking the question whether that really could happen. And it's taking a skeptical look at it and asking if it's not possible that some humanity has crept in, that because we're using our humanity to study the universe, that it might also be distorting our view of the universe. And our description of the physics of the universe might have some of our humanity in it. It might not be purely universal. In some sense, the book is asking the question, is physics discovered or is it invented? The concepts that we've derived, our explanations for how things work, are they really the same that aliens would come up with? Or did they reflect something about the way that we think and we see the universe? Hmm. And so um, how do you then develop that theme uh, in the chat? For example, uh, the introduction, you, you give what's at stake when uh, we would meet aliens. So w what, is, what is at stake in that process? And I assume that you know, you're, you're talking very hypothetical about mm -hmm. a very uh, uh, intimate communication, but it could affect other kinds of communication as well. Yeah, you know, what's at stake is nothing more than the meaning of our science. You know, we like to believe that when we're explaining the universe down to its quantum fields and studying the origin of the universe, that we're getting real answers. We're telling the story of the universe, that we're describing the territory. We're not just writing a map of it. 
you know, and, and so I think it's important to understand whether what we're doing is revealing the truth or sort of investigating our own minds and the way that we think about things. Um, but of course, this is an impossible question. One way to think about it is there are diverse ways of explaining the same thing. You bring up the, the, the point that uh, with uh, uh, in the early days of quantum physics with matrix mechanics mm -hmm. and the wave function and uh, uh, Heisenberg and Schrodinger, they look like they were aliens, right? Yeah. At the beginning, they look completely alien until others show that they were you know, one was a transformation of the other, or they both represented the same thing mm -hmm. under why. And that that's a theme in science and mathematics today, the great, the great um, uh, advances in mathematical sciences shows the deep structural relationship between areas of mathematics that seemingly have no relationship to each other. Absolutely. And there's been many times in the history of our physics when we have seen connections between mathematics, you know, algebra and geometry turn out to be different ways to tackle the same kinds of questions. Uh, and so, you know, one question is like, well, if we find a theory of everything in the universe and aliens find theirs, do they have to be equivalent? You know, is it the same as Schrodinger and Heisenberg having, you know, essentially the same idea in different clothing? Or is it possible that aliens might develop a completely unique idea, one that isn't just a mapping or that can't be described or mapped from our ideas, but really is unique. It tells a different conceptual story about what's happening in the universe. And we like to believe that that's impossible because we think, well, there is something that's happening out there. There is one thing that's really happening and we are revealing that truth. And therefore aliens must be revealing the same truth even if they use different symbols. But philosophically, that's an assumption. It's possible that there are other theories out there that could equivalently describe the universe, because in the end, our theories are describing things that are not observed, they're invisible. You know, for example, we have a theory of how an electron moves through a magnetic field and as responding to the field, but the field itself is part of our story of how that particle moves. We don't know if the field itself is physical, if it's a thing that exists when you're not looking at it. You can't see fields directly. You can only see their effects on mm, particles. Sure. So in that sense, it's a construct of our minds. And we don't know if alien, you know, theory of electricity and magnetism would also have to have fields in it, or if they have a completely different way of doing things. And if they do, that says something deep about the nature of truth and of objective reality. So this is a major theme of the book and, and which I, I engage very much as I was reading it to myself. And uh, I'm not sure I either understand or agree with maybe mm -hmm. what what the point is because <laughs> the fundamental thing is if the aliens have a different structure to seeing it it would seem to be the same thing as heisenberg uh, and and schrodinger mm -hmm. um it radically different on the surface but pointing to the same thing but you make you're making the point that, that what they're pointing to could be different things. And you're saying, uh, on, on the one hand, that maybe there's no ultimate thing that's out there. And then you say even more difficult is that there are two. So mm -hmm. you know, those are two <laughs> levels of differences philosophical. And I, I just don't see how that's possible. I, I, I mean, it's, if... If they're seeing something different, yeah. um, that's just because they are, they're both looking at something more superficial. Mm -hmm. And if they're looking at quantum theory and they're having something really different, that would, to me, just mean that the quantum theory is not fundamentally something below it, that they're both missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the fun thing about this is separating what's hard and scientific from what's soft and philosophical. And I think often in physics, we sort of intertwine those two things. You know, we have a theory that explains high precision experiments, and that theory works very, very well. And that's scientific. It makes predictions. It can be tested. The philosophical implications of that theory are philosophical. Like, does it mean that the theory is real, that this is actually what the universe is doing, that our calculations of quantum electrodynamics, because they're correct at 10 decimal places, that that's also 
how the universe decides what happens to an electron, right? This is extra step we often take that assuming that there's an objective reality out there, that there's one explanation for everything. Those are philosophical statements and they seem obvious. You might think, oh, of course, that's the scenario. Otherwise science can't work. But there are other philosophical positions. There are people out there who take other approaches and, and think that other things might be might be realistic. And, and let me remind you that the history of our best, most transformational discoveries are times when we were forced to give up assumptions that seemed very intuitive, that seemed very, very natural, like the assumption that, you know, particles have to, or objects, if they're here and then they're there, they have to go from here to there, that there's a continuous path for everything. Quantum mechanics tells us that's not true. It seems very sensible. It seems like any universe that ignores that would be bonkers, mm -hmm. but our intuition is not a valuable guide for physics. What we should do is stick to the science, stick to what experiments can actually tell us, and the philosophical assumptions behind it, we should wonder about. And, and yeah. so the book essentially is asking like, where are the assumptions we're making that convince us that alien physics has to be the same as ours? And how strong are they really? Is it possible? that they could be wrong. Now, personally, I'm a scientist. I devoted my life to understanding the universe. It feels to me like I'm discovering the truth, but I worry that there are assumptions built into our physics that could be wrong. And I think investigating them might also open the doors to new directions and new discoveries. Yeah, I, I, I agree with all of that. And I think that's a, a very wonderful way to question our fundamental theories in physics, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't go all the way to the bottom with you in saying that at the <laughs> very, very bottom, there, there could be a pluralism. Uh, yeah. I, I know philosophers, we've talked to a lot of them, uh, have a pluralistic view of biology or different things, but it's mm -hmm. hard to see how you'd have a pluralistic view of the ultimate fundamental. You may not be there. You may be a zillion steps away from there, yeah. uh, of course. Uh, and mm -hmm. everybody may be super, we may be talking superficial, even though you get, you get accuracy to, to, to 10 decimal places in, in quantum mechanics. That's fine because you're not ultimately there. Maybe it's impossible yeah. to get there. Maybe we'll yeah. never get there, but there is a there there. <laughs> well, how do we know, right? None of our what's theories. The alternative? What, what's the alternative to that? That the there are, yeah. yeah, the alternative is that it's an infinite stack of effective theories. I mean, you say we're not there, we're not describing things fundamental, and that's true. In many cases, that's obvious, like Newton's theory, obviously not describing really what's happening. It's an effective approximation that works in some scenarios. Same with true of like fluid dynamics. You would never apply fluid dynamics to like a crystal or to a vapor because it doesn't apply. It only applies in certain scenarios. That's also true of quantum mechanics and our best theories of electrons and quarks. We don't think that that's the fundamental theory of the universe. We haven't found it. And we don't know that it exists. I mean, think about the assumption. Those are two separate, that, two separate comments. We haven't found it. Yes. And that we don't know it exists. Those are, and, those, and yet we've there's, never there's found a big gap it. gap there. <laughs> Absolutely. But think about the philosophical assumption you're making by saying it does exist. No theory we've ever found nothing we've ever seen suggests the existence of a fundamental theory. Every theory we, you have in science is an effective theory, an approximate theory that doesn't describe a fundamental layer of reality. So to say there must be a fundamental theory, we've never seen one. We have no evidence that it exists. So is it this, could is, just go on forever. We have no a, idea. If this is, is this a semantical issue that we're discussing? Because I'm totally open to what that fundamental theory can be. And it right. can be that it oscillates. I don't know what it is. I yeah. mean, it, it, but there is a one explanation at the ultimate level, even if that explanation builds into it some pluralistic way of happening. It's like saying the difference between a universe and a multiverse. Um, it, it, you still have to have a mechanism that generates that, that have some relationship to each other. As I said, it doesn't have to be a, a very deterministic ultimate theory so that that theory can have multiplicities to it. But mm -hmm. that is the theory. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and maybe you're saying that, you know, that theory is that there are no theories that it goes all the way down. And to me, that sounds like it embeds a, at some point a contradiction. 
But yeah, it's very compelling what you're saying. The idea that there is a fundamental description in the universe, even if it's fundamentally probabilistic or includes randomness, et cetera, et cetera, that there's a fundamental layer, microscopic bits and bobs, which are somehow inherent to the universe, which do their thing. And everything emerges from that, that everything we experience comes out somehow from those little bits to doing and froing and doing their thing. And it's certainly possible that that does describe the universe. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have no evidence. We have a philosophical hunch or that feels comfortable to us, but we don't know that that has to be the way reality is. There are alternative ideas. For example, perhaps at every layer of effective theories, there aren't connections. Things just, there are different sets of laws that describe things at different layers, which might explain why, for example, we have difficulty moving from one set of effective theories to another. Like we cannot go from the standard model of particle physics to predicting hurricanes, even though in principle, right, everything does bubble up from that lowest layer. Why can't we make that connection? Well, maybe it's just too complicated. Maybe it's chaos. Maybe chaos. it's just too much computation, or maybe there's something else going on at each layer. You know, some philosophers. But then that itself is the fundamental theory <laughs> yeah in that sense you're describing like a set of fundamental theories that describe each layer and some philosophers use this as an explanation for consciousness for example sure. how does consciousness ex observe uh, sure. sorry emerge from these little bits and bobs maybe it doesn't maybe it has its own set of rules right and sure. here's the thing is you different, might be layers saying, different emergence i mean mm -hmm. that's that's part of the theory sure. of the universe that makes but sense. we don't know if aliens would find the same effective theories because every time we make an effective theory we choose a set of assumptions a, a region that we're trying to describe like when we're talking about fluid dynamics we say okay i'm going to assume you know a comp a in a incompressible fluid or i'm going to assume no viscosity or i'm going to assume viscosity you make some assumptions and that defines the region of applicability for your theory every theory we have has some built-in assumptions that defines where it's valid. Even the feel, even the theory of quantum mechanics and the standard model, right? Only works up to the Planck scale because that's the point at which you can no longer ignore gravity, which the standard model has to do because it can't describe gravity. So every theory we have starts from a somewhat subjective set of choices. What part of the universe are you going to describe? And to us, it's very natural to say, I'm gonna describe particles, I'm gonna describe planets, I'm gonna describe fluids. But that's a choice of what we are interested in, the things we want to describe. So imagine a universe with no fundamental layer, as you were saying, and a bunch of descriptions of each emergent phenomenon. Aliens might choose a different set of things to focus on, and it could, they could show up with a whole different set of theories. And they're not interested in our fluid dynamics or our quantum mechanics or whatever. They have their own set of theories which don't line up with ours. And that could still be wonderful and educational, but it would mean that our physics isn't something we necessarily have it in common with the aliens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.